All right, dudes. Discovery, go at throttle up. I got back just in time. Yeah. I got back just in time, man. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that. Airways we just made it. Center. They'll stay plugged in all the way through impact. All right, Remember, dude. Remember, at this point, five minutes out, no more commands. The smart nav will be possible. See what we got. The hey, hey. Watching it just like hey, Kelly, what's up? It's time. Us. It's time. Indeed. Discovery, go at throttle up. Indeed. So, if you're wondering why I'm here, it's a double asteroid redirect mission. Discovery, go at throttle up. See that small thing on the screen? Not the big one, the small one. All right, we've reached five minutes. They're gonna punch that with a satellite, the and what, when I say punch it, I mean crash into it. Has passed, and the team is simply watching that data stream in, just like we are. Also remember, there is a thirty-second, thirty-eight second lag for the data to travel to Earth, and also an additional few more seconds for image processing. It's important to note that. You eating something, dude? I just rammed my dinner into my into my mouth. Should be hearing. I'm here. Chatter in the. I got my JPL shirt on. Momentarily. All right. This is Dart MSC and DT Mog. Five minutes till impact. Five minutes till impact. We are at 1,100 miles away. 1,100 miles in five minutes. 1,700 kilometers. Also, our window for sending fast. any commands to the spacecraft is hey, done. Hey, thanks for the bits, everybody. <laughs> Contingencies done. <laughs> All right. So, if you're wondering what they're doing, you're wondering why why this is going on, I'm going to fast forward them for a moment. This is the double asteroid redirect. So, we got two asteroids here. So, one of them is orbiting around the other, and this one is orbiting around the sun. What NASA is trying to do is they're trying to see if they can redirect an asteroid by literally crashing a satellite into one, litho-breaking one, basically punching the asteroid in the face. Equal and opposite reactions. That will mess with its orbit. But here's the thing. NASA was very careful when they chose this mission. The reason why they were careful is because you don't just want to hit an asteroid and have it change its orbit around the sun. It could, hit, it could end up hitting Earth. You don't want to do that. So what they did was they found an asteroid that's orbiting around another asteroid. This is Dimorphos and Didymos. Okay. Discovery, go at throttle up. One is orbiting around the other, and they're going to crash into one. They're going to crash into the one that's orbiting with a very small satellite. DART is a very tiny little satellite. They're going to hit that thing with DART, right? And they're going to see if its orbit changed around the bigger asteroid. 600 kilos, about the size of a vending machine. Yep, yeah, there you go. Dish, 84 months when he's abdicted. Boom! So, they picked a very safe asteroid to try and redirect, and then they're going to measure to see if its orbit changed after they hit this thing. The really crazy part about this is that we have a camera. We have a camera of, of, of this is a camera. It, there is a 38 second lag, but a camera nonetheless. So, I'm going to shut up, and I want to see this thing punch this asteroid in the face. How far away is it? It's out in the asteroid belt, poker. Yeah, and I'm starting to see Dimorphos start to come into view there. You can so see this is Dimorphos, and that's Dimorphos. They're going to crash into Dimorphos. The, uh, the satellite is going to try and hit this thing. Unbelievable clarity of images. Asteroid redirect. The, the idea is to see if we can punch, punch asteroids with satellites to get them to change orbit. No Bruce Willis needed. All right, here we go. All honors on this event, space telescopes. <laughs> Marco Sinaros has entered the chat, dude. Content. Literally, literally that. That's yeah, the. It's the yeah. same thing. We're doing. We're doing. NASA's doing expanse stuff today. Two minutes out. Does not look like one single rock to me. Oh boy, we're getting close. Fourteen thousand miles per hour, Lori. Fourteen thousand miles per hour, and remember, you know. Uh, Forty-five minutes ago, fifty-five minutes ago, we couldn't even resolve this this object in space and now we are you can see us zeroing in right on target and we're now dropping the clock and we'll go by loss of signal to confirm impact right yes oh here we go we'll get that loss of signal and then we'll hear from lena adams again um letting us know that we've like been we'll successful I feel like be a <laughs> i'm scared chat hold me i think so 
Gee. we're starting to see more Tried history. This is so um, chaos, dude. More for resolution. Sure. In fact, look at that. Didymos has even gone out of the view. We're now just seeing Dimorphos. This is remarkable stuff. Stay on target. Oh my look at that. Stay on target. Looks like control system settling down. Angular rates look really good. I think we're going to get the investigation team some good pictures. It's small compared wow. to the Dimorphos, dude. No, no, come on, we can do better than that. <laughs> oh. Starting to see those individual boulders there. You can see shadows. Okay. Oh, oh boy, we're going to hit that thing. Oh, uh, don't get me wrong. That's what they want to do. Oh, they want to actually hit it. This isn't that. a flyby. They're going to punch that thing. Yeah. Here we go. Looks to me like we're headed straight in. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 gosh. That's getting big real fast. Oh, wow. Oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Eight, yeah. Seven, oh, six, wow. Five, four. Oh, jeez. Two. Discovery. No one. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Dude, look at that. All right. We got it? Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, yep, no, there it goes. We have impact. Dude, that thing got close. Man, we got a lot of pictures up close. Fantastic! Oh, fantastic! All right. Oh. What? <laughs> yeah, right, dude. This. Very few words can really capture this moment. Wow! This is beautiful. There's to watch. Dr. Z right there. What a great mission this was. I don't know, Bobber, but that's pretty cool, dude. That's why I made it a thing to come back on. That was awesome. Team, a few weeks ago they had their last dress rehearsal. They were getting emotional at the dress rehearsal. And they're like, "This is this is crazy. We're getting emotional. This is not joking. I can only imagine what they are feeling right now." Yes. Right, Paul. Yeah, exactly. You can see them there on screen. They're all Man, they punched excited. that thing. That was great. Wow. Hearing impact, the curtains close on Draco feed. That raw joy from the team, years of hard work and the weight of expectation lifted off their shoulders. This is closing velocity, uh, fourteen thousand miles an hour. Fantastic. How long till they know the orbit has changed? Geek, there's a satellite that's flying in formation, or was was flying in formation with Dart. It ain't flying in no it ain't flying in formation no more. Moment for the mission. That's how they'll know. Work. And it's they can look at it with a telescope. Days, Absolutely. Months. Now, you know, as I always say, it's one of my favorite. <laughs> They're all out of a job. Now They're students. The science starts. It just Notice how it said now, John Hopkins on the wall. Impacted. Now we're going to see Don't for worry real about it. They're already how out of a effective job. we were. We're going to train all of those ground-based uh, telescopes. That got um, dark real quick. On the Didymos dimorphous system, and we're going to make measurements that will help us uh, uh, dark. determine <laughs> just yeah. how, what its orbit looks like now relative to what it was before no so, this is this is done great, study a lot cool. of guys a lot of studies from jpl in or general like okay jokes aside a lot of studies are done by jpl a great like, purpose that, a lot of a lot of these scientific missions are done by universities so it's university so it's professors and students like if you look there's a bunch of university students on look that kid that guy has a backwards hat must be college kids. No, seriously, look at the age of some of these guys in here. Lori, any last words to mark this historic moment? You know, so that's that's actually really cool. The ones that are older, they're all professors and stuff. So yeah, you don't need to worry about anybody being out of a job. If anything, that's a hell of a thing to put on your resume, don't you think? Oh yeah, I punched an asteroid in the face with a satellite the size of a vending machine. Something like a dangerous, hazardous asteroid impact. What an amazing thing. We've never had yeah, that capability awesome, before. Yeah, that's awesome, Thank you so much, Lori. Those are poignant last words. Tahira, history Does that mean it's not coming on, made. then? I think uh, this picture over here... I think that picture is a pretty good indicator that it is not working correctly. It got a little bit of that last image before it impact. Before impact. How far is the asteroid? It's out in the belt. It's a good ways away. It looks like it tried to get one last picture off, and then, nope. Discovery, no nope. throttle up. Help, you're getting sucked back into Satisfactory. Sorry. The rock bleeds. We can kill it. Yep.
Oh. Man, look at the res that they got for that close. This isn't bad considering 14,000 mile an hour differential speed. That's, uh... Yeah, it's, that's pre it's pretty fast. <laughs> Please show the impact again. Sure. Here, we'll, we'll, we'll watch it in 2x speed, ready? Da -dum. Da dum da dum dum bum 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 Oh yeah, Casper, this one is pretty kerbal. That's pretty kerbal. Now the thing is that you know what, fellas? You can do you can do asteroid redirects in Kerbal. Oh yeah, we could do that. Oh yeah. You can punch an asteroid just like Dark Ken, sure. And it will do the same thing, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, the interpolation videos. Yep, yep. Do it, you won't. <laughs> yep. Yep. NASA's punching an asteroid. They just did it. I I just made it, dudes. I just freaking made it in time. Uh, uh. Yeah, boop. <laughs> All right, let's see what they have to say. <laughs> This is so a big can. deal, uh, and we and, and this was a really us? hard oh, technology demonstration to hit a small asteroid we've never seen before and do right. it in oh, such yeah. a Look, fashion. There. Um, but I know other scientists on the team, like me, are already pointing at those images, being like, "Did you see that boulder? Did you see that smooth area? Did you see the shape? What does yeah. that mean?" And Lichi Cube That's pretty is cool. like flying by right about <laughs> now. They're close yes. approach, so, like yeah. taking images and they're storing them, and we'll get those in the next. Disregard day. Bill Nye. Acquire here Bill Kerman. Space are looking. They're looking at the brightening of the rock that's thrown off from that spectacular collision that we saw, and this is going to go on for weeks. And so there's still a lot of excitement to come, but uh, nothing to no, take Bill away from this right. moment. Yeah. Yeah, this is just the beginning. It looks like everybody is celebrating here in Mission Operations. I think I just saw Bill Nye there. And so it is a huge day for this team, but also for humanity. You know, Nancy, you mentioned hey, earlier look, about some of the There's international the PDL. collaborations. That's cool. And could you um, give us an idea on kind of the scope of DART's mission, right? It's not could just they do some more tests? The they United will. That's States part of Space Force's mission, nuclear. So can you expand a little on that? Yeah, I mean, planetary defense Overwatch is after really an international issue. Yep. We are all on this planet together, right? I mean, yeah. And so, and I think it's been so great for this mission to really support and embrace that planetary, planetary defense planetary, officer. Yeah. That's the guy with the international cooperation with the upside. Or, defense, well, so actually, it looks like a Starfleet logo, learned. doesn't it? And uh, it's going to say the upside down Pontiac logo, but I don't think people understand what that means. Mm -hmm. Working together, you know, in order to make this moment happen for NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office, building the spacecraft here at APL. Um, um, but really, uh, scientists around the world are ready to get Actually, speaking studied. Actually that, hold on. Um, what did we do to Dimorphos? Mm -hmm. and, but more importantly, what does that mean for potentially applying this in the future? I mean, DART really is just the start. It's just the first planetary defense test mission. It was spectacular, and it's accomplished, and we'll ah. figure out how effective it was. That's really what we're going to learn in the next weeks to come. All right, oh, yes. we hit this asteroid. Now, oh, yes. how effective was that Boy, has deflecting one. it, and what would that mean for using it? Yeah, there's still so much to unpackage here. And so we have a special guest who is wondering, you know, more of what's next for this big mission. So let's hear from her now. Hey, everyone. I'm Danny Hansen, American Paralympic rower and hydro athlete. And first, I would like to congratulate the entire DART team on crossing the finish line. So congratulations. And with that, here's my question. Now that DART has impacted, how will you know if the spacecraft has actually changed the asteroid's orbit? That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, so this is a double asteroid system. So all we've done here actually is uh, is change slightly how Dimorphos goes around Didymos, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the telescopes on the Earth have studied this for years. So we knew it used to be 11 hours yeah. and 55 minutes. Now, what is it going to be now? And so the telescopes are going to measure that period change. And they're so good at this. They've done it for decades already to get us to that point. Mm -hmm. And they're going to work for the next weeks and make that measurement. And when we have it, we're going to be sure to share it with everybody to see how much we did deflect this asteroid with the dark collision. Wow. Well, 
Nancy, I mean, it's time for you to celebrate. So congratulations on everything tonight and go dart. Oh, go dart. This was spectacular. <laughs> yes. And so we have Samson standing by in Mission Operations with two very special That's guests. That's the best. Let's hop over there and see what's going on. Thanks, Tahira. I have the pleasure of introducing NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, who has a special well, message uh, for us. Well, I'll tell you what. We're, hey, congratulations. Boy, the DART team, you really did this one very well. It's been a successful completion of the first part of the world's first planetary defense test. And there were years of hard work. There was a lot of innovation and creativity that went into this mission. And I believe it's going to teach us how one day to protect our own planet from an incoming asteroid. I really look forward to learning all about what's happening from the observatory. There we go so they can tell us about the changes in this asteroid's orbit. So thank you to this international team. We are showing that planetary defense so is a global endeavor, and it is very possible to save our planet. All right. That was eloquently put, Administrator Nelson. Joining me right now are Deputy NASA Administrator Pam Melroy and APEL Pam? Director Ralph Semmel. Thank you both for being with me. Pam, I'll start with you. Um, how are you feeling it, having witnessed true, this historic event up close? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was exactly. absolutely elated, especially as we saw the camera getting closer and just realizing all the science that we're going to learn. But the best part was seeing at the end that there was no question there was going to be an impact. And to see the team uh, overjoyed with their success. She's too. cool. What does this mean for NASA, what does this mean for planetary defense? Well, NASA works we'll for the out, benefit Jordan. of humanity. So for us, it's the ultimate fulfillment of our mission to do something like this, a technology demonstration that, who knows, someday could save our home. Very powerful. Thank you, Pam. Ralph, Discovery. Go at throttle up. you're in that mock for the moment of impact. We've seen a lot of major milestones in APL's history in space. We're talking the first flyby of Pluto, the first mission to orbit Mercury, and now the Discovery. first spacecraft to impact an asteroid. What was the moment like for you in there? It, it, was, the subs, it was incredible uh, to think, to see how so many years of hard work and creativity resulted in a direct hit of dimorphous was just an adrenaline rush. Um, I'll add that uh, I've been at the lab now for quite a few years, and I've been involved in a lot of missions and achievements, and never before have I been so excited to see a signal go away and an <laughs> image to stop. Well, I'm going to give you both a treat right now. We're going to play that replay of impact on our screens uh, oh, right yeah, now so you can enjoy it again. <laughs> Ralph, what does this achievement mean for Johns Hopkins APL? Um, huge, right? Oh, it, it is huge. Uh, um, in fact, if you'll excuse the, the pun-like statement here, uh, the uh, impact um, on APL, as it was on Dimorphos, is immense. Uh, um, this is exactly uh, the uh, kind of mission that APL uh, seeks uh, to do, uh, um, a, a never-before-done mission. I'd like to thank NASA <laughs> for entrusting us with this for the and I'd like to tell everyone how proud I am of the entire DART team and APL what would the for this game-changing achievement. Depends on the satellite's mass. We are watching. If you wanted to calculate the impact force, you'd need to know how fast it's going the mass of, and the mass of the payload. You should be able to get impact force. And then you should theoretically be able to see how much that orbit's changed. You could calculate all that based off of this thing's force, or this thing's uh, speed and mass. Pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward math. Never before seen. Wasted. Up until <laughs> today. That is amazing. You know, it's just as good oh. the second and third time. <laughs> There's Adrian the drop off is hitting us with a 1,500 impact. viewer raid. Fantastic. Well, there you have it. A lot of oh. pride here tonight, along with the promise of big things to come. Uh, and with the successful dart impact that will do it for us today at the Mission Operations Center. Buongiorno! <laughs>
<laughs> Amazing. I, I mean, this? today good, is right? a fantastic day. <laughs> and DART is just the beginning of a global planetary <laughs> defense no, effort. Stay. In 2024, <laughs> the European Space Agency's HERA mission will conduct follow-up <laughs> observations of asteroid dimorphos and measure in great detail yeah. DART's kinetic awesome. impactor tests. Let's take a look. Yes, Primo. Yeah, sure. <laughs> What's going on, guys? <laughs> how, how awesome was that dart mission? Did Adrian enjoy it? it? Adrian enjoyed it. I know Adrian enjoyed it. That was awesome. Did you see that? Thank you so much for the raid, Adrian. I really appreciate it. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dish indeed. Indeed. Oh! <laughs> Yep, that's what it's going to do. So, guys, if you're just wondering, you're just coming in, NASA just punched an asteroid in the face with, with that with that satellite right there, actually. Adrian loved it? Yeah, Fudo. That, I mean, you don't get a mission like this every once in a while. Like, you only get a mission like this every once in a while. I mean, an impactor is crazy. That's really cool. Hopefully, we get more missions like this. All right, Jack, see ya. Greetings from Berlusconi. What's up, Gozer? How are you? It's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. We started designing and conceiving the whole mission and the spacecraft. I love this. Yeah, Vincent. Yeah, it's a good one. Italy is the best. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But we're making it possible. You could say that Hera is really three spacecraft. Yeah, Bobber. Yeah. We have one, the main spacecraft that we are currently building at OHP in Germany. But we also have two smaller missions that are spacecraft in their own right. Those are the two CubeSats. Juventus and Milani. The, and the slightly raised his hands don't make us laugh. I'm Italian, man. What do you want? I speak with my hands. Everybody knows that. My name is Margherita Cardi from Pevac International in Italy. We will work now what? The other CubeSat, Juventus, which will perform what do you want? Of the asteroid to understand the internal ah, Maku, I don't this care. It doesn't bother me, dude, if it doesn't bother you. For ISA, a space Once we arrive there, we will be deploying the CubeSat in order to complement ISA's scientific observations, taking more risk, but also trying to have higher rewards. The CubeSat will be... Try to speak Italian? Nah. Volume up, got you. Of the structure of HERA. I'm gonna shut up. Yeah, Lord, for sure. They are just the size of shoebox. However, they contain complex technology, which will really allow to bring added value to the night, whole mission. Night, guys. Air night if you're coming in from Adrian. It's late over there. You guys go to sleep. Between NASA and ESA. The two missions complement each other and will validate an asteroid deflection technique that we could use in the future to protect planet Earth. There you have it. Tonight, we've ushered in a new era in planetary defense. At 7.14 p.m. Eastern, the DART spacecraft targeted and collided that. with D Dimorphos, showcasing a technique well, that we could use if a hazardous asteroid is ever on a collision course with Earth. Even though impact is over, the process of moving the asteroid is still going on as we speak. Over the next days and weeks, we'll be monitoring Dimorphos from all angles, tracking its change in orbit with ground-based observatories, studying the impact crater and ejected materials with space telescopes, and is this NASA or Space Force? NASA is working with Space Force. Can I give? Like Lucy, Python, and Jill. What's and up? Webb. Now, don't miss a beat. For mission updates, follow Asteroid Watch on Twitter, oh, NASA Solar System gosh. on Twitter and Facebook. Remember, impact was just the beginning. Science and images will be rolling in soon, so stay tuned to nasa.gov forward slash DART. Amazing. We'll be back at 8 p.m. with members of the team to capture reactions and celebrate this historic event. So join us soon on nasa.gov forward slash live. <laughs> and for more updates on the Arte on Artemis and rollback operations happening tonight at the Kennedy Space Center, head to nasa.gov slash hey, Artemis-1. Thank you for watching NASA's coverage of DART Impact from Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory in Maryland. We want to give a special thanks to all of our guests for participating in today's broadcast and a big yeah, shout Marshall. out to my co-host cool. Samson Rainey for keeping us keyed into the action. Yeah. Go DART and good night. The red is a loss of signal, guys. If we go back to the impact here, take a look. So 
once again, if, if you haven't seen the mission here, take a look. So we have we have Dynamos and Dimorphos, right? So it's a double asteroid system. What is what? So what does that mean? This one is orbiting around that one. And NASA is using the satellite called DART, or used the satellite called DART to hit that thing, to hit the smaller one. The reason why they wanted to hit the smaller one is because they wanted to redirect its orbit and try to basically deorbit around the bigger asteroid. You don't want to push the asteroid around and then have that asteroid hit another asteroid and then have, have that asteroid like grab assist off of a planet and then maybe you would like suddenly butterfly affected have an asteroid hit earth you don't want that to happen so they picked this double asteroid system to hit with a satellite to see if we could well hit asteroids out of the way to be pretty blunt actually it's the right way to put it they had a loss of signal part way through the data transfer yeah exactly mm -hmm. lucia cube images confirmed in Images confirmed in the coming hours. Images they will have images post impact. Yeah, exactly. There was a there was a small satellite that was deployed off of Dart that was basically flying in formation with it, and it basically got data from the impact. I don't know if it has pictures or not, but we'll see. Good night. English is not for you. Uh, I'm sorry. Good night. The small satellite is basically an escape pod. Yeah. Yep. Here. So they punch the smaller asteroid. So what? Because when you hit it, it's just going to stay around the other asteroid. You don't want it to fly off and maybe end up hitting Earth someday. That would be that would be bad, and that could happen. You don't want that to happen. But yeah, how about that, huh? Look at how look at how crisp the picture is up close. That's pretty cool. Do you know the actual scale of the last picture? I'm not a hundred percent sure, but that's really close. I don't know, maybe up, maybe maybe fifty feet off the ground, uh, yeah, fifteen meters. Not very far. Go back two frames, okay? What is the bright area at the bottom left of the image? It's just a rock that's stuck. It's just a weird shape of the asteroid. Not everything out there is a perfect sphere. I wish they would have a second camera unit in separate view of collision. I think that's what the CubeSat has. He said 5 to 10 centimeters per pixel on the last image. That's, yeah, that's crazy. That's really close. <laughs> nice. That's awesome, Isaac. They said 24 to 48 hours for the pictures from the other satellite. Yep, yep. Kenwa, 20-month resub. There you go. CubeSat has far less download speed, so it will take a month to get all the data it's recorded. There you go. What are your thoughts putting cream into a carbonara? Mm -hmm. You could. You could get away with it. Hey, Dr. Death. I don't know, dudes. I don't know. Putting putting cream in a carbonara sauce. That's not breaking the spaghetti, but that's almost breaking the spaghetti, dudes. Almost. Leonardo, yeah. The space community is awesome, dude. It fun, fun. It was a pleasure to know you. Alright, Prox. Have a good night, man. I'll see you later. Discovery. Go at throttle up. Mandar. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, you guys want to see this mission. We watched this thing launch, and I'm, I'm really happy that I actually got on in time to see it impact. Interesting, Puma. They were undecided, huh? <laughs> yeah, see? Look at that crazy right yikes here I'll link it in chat so you can see it again Genjo 
Yeah, right there. Unbelievable. I don't think this is the first time a dart vehicle has exploded on this channel. Ah, yeah, you're right. I'm going to hang up. <laughs> Yeah, it's just I got I had something in my eye. I had something in my eye. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, guys, sorry I couldn't be on for more coverage today, dude. But yeah, we got in and that was a sweet raid from Adrian. Grazie. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Which one is Dart? Dart is the small circle right there. And Dimorphos and Dynamos are right there. So this thing actually, that one's Earth right there. It grab assists off Earth at the last second, maybe? Let me see. Is it, no, no, no grab assists. Just straight, straight elliptical transfer. Very low energy ellipti elliptical transfer. But yeah, there you go. And back to your day off. Yep, yep. Okay. All right, Budo. See ya. So playing KSV now counts as a previous experience for Space Force. Wait, what? I don't know. Apparently, according to Rocket Guy, James Webb and Hubble were watching. Yep. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Here, let's see. Uh, uh, we need eyes. Here, hold on. DSN now. That's what we want. Yep. Okay, so Kembra was communicating with Dart. Madrid 54 was communicating with James Webb. And you don't need the Deep Space Network for Hubble. Hubble can be acquired through Tedris. What's that? So what you guys are looking at here is NASA's Deep Space Network. These are the satellites in Madrid, Goldstone, and Canberra. Uh, this is the the deep space network that can track that tracks anything that's outside of Earth's orbit. Actually, it's anything that's outside of medium Earth orbit. You can see in real time what NASA's talking to. You can see they they were talking to Dart. They weren't talking. They aren't talking to Dart anymore. Dart's gone. It just passed the impact a couple minutes ago. Footage will be downloaded in the coming hours. Yep, Alicia. Yep. Mm-hmm. I had the pleasure of contributing to the Kerbal Dart mod and struggled to hit the moon in game. NASA made it look easy. I mean, they're hitting a double asteroid system, which is unbelievably difficult. MGB, yep. Yeah, yep, yep, Darius, I remember that. You missed the impact. Yeah, it just, just happened uh, about, eh, about a half hour ago. Yep. And you can see this one, the 70 meter dish at Madrid is communicating with Juno. 65, which is a, uh, that's a 40 meter, I think. The 40 meter is hitting, uh, working with Chandra X-ray. 53 is talking to Curiosity and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. 54 is talking to James Webb. And then 55 is talking to Maven. Yep, Discovery they're definitely final. talking to James Webb. It's doing something. No, Geek, I haven't. Yeah, exactly, Chief. Yeah, there you go. How long until impact? It's already it's already impacted, guys. It's already gone. I love that answering some questions in the NASA channel. People are jumping into your PMs and arguing what a waste of time and money this is. Redirection is that redirection is actually impossible. Uh, Hunter, the real thing is why are you listening to people that don't understand physics, that think they understand physics? 
peak amount stupid, dude. They don't understand how physics works. They, <laughs> wow, the most entitled person I've ever seen, right? Like, don't listen to him, dude. I'm not listening. I'm trying to educate. Oh, <laughs> monster. I want you to think for a second about the amount of those messages that I get on the daily. Am I right? Dude, you got a taste. You got a taste of what I, you got a taste of what I get on the daily, man. <laughs> Don't listen to him, man. Screw him. Right? Like it's not worth it. How much variation in the orbit did they get? We're not sure, Dragon. We'll 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 know sooner rather than later. Favorite we've been doing this stuff a long time yourself. Right on, dude. Right on. Any news on the web problem? Nifodi, as far as I know, web is working just fine. NASA launched an impactor mission back in 2005 called Deep Impact. Yes, that's really the name. Into a comet, and this is what it looked like. Damn, dude. I don't want to keep that on the main screen because then, then people will think that's a picture of Dart, but they said Webb will be able to see it. Webb will be able to see it. It's not that far for James Webb. It's really close, actually. James Webb was looking at this thing for the past 35 minutes. Cool. That's awesome. Well, Bubble and Lucy were watching. That's cool. Freakers, that's really cool. Actually, SLS has not gotten pulled back to the hangar. Subs, I was I erroneously said that they were gonna roll back. Nope. Nope. They they aren't rolling. They haven't rolled back in the, yet. They scrubbed the Tuesday launch date though. But they haven't rolled back, which is all right. <laughs> um, yeah, I said they started to roll back. That wasn't right because I was like ninety-five percent sure they would have just been like, nah. But uh, yep, uh, they haven't rolled back yet. They're gonna roll back at eleven tonight. Cool, 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 cool. Sweet. I think she said they're rolling back tonight. Oh, Everything thank you. Well, you guys give me the news first for a second today. I'm way out of the loop, dudes. It's been a weird day for me. <laughs> I haven't been near my computer at all today. I had to, I had to bring Ludo back. That sucked. <laughs> they're rolling. Oh, thank, thank you. Yeah, it, it, you don't want to roll the dice with a hurricane like that, especially since Ian is getting more intense. What does rolling back mean? Um... They're putting the rocket back in the hangar, Fapsaurus. Yeah, that's what that means. Um, so we're talking about NASA's SLS rocket. It is a gigantic 30... It's about as tall as a 30-story building. It's a gigantic rocket that NASA's using to get to the moon. And how they move the thing... Here's a picture of it. It's a big boy. If you look at the railings right there, you get a good sense of scale. Like a person is probably about this tall... It's it's pretty big. It's a pretty big vehicle. You see the door right there for the elevator shaft. It's it's pretty large. So how they move this thing, if you look, there's nothing under here except for the flame diverters. How they move this thing is they send a giant tracked vehicle called a crawler transporter. Uh, let me see if I have a picture of it. Yeah, there it is. There's a giant tracked vehicle called a CT, a crawler transporter, and that thing goes and it actually has hydraulics on it and it picks up the entire launch pad, picks up the whole launch pad and launch vehicle and it rolls it back back and forth from the pad. If they're going to roll, but NASA wants to roll back because there's a hurricane coming towards Florida. Hurricane Ian is going to hit Tampa very soon and it's not, it's not going to be pretty. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, dude. That's that's amazing. 
considering the the rocket is eight million pounds, um, and the launcher is seven. It's like fifteen million pounds worth of worth of weight being put on there. Uh, yeah, it, it's a lot. Is it electric or does it run on diesel? It's electric. With a big diesel generator next to it. Yeah, belt fed. That thing has two Alco 251C diesel engines. Two V16 diesel engines. They make 3,000 horse. And their, their power... It's, it's basically a little mini power plant. It's a monster, dude. It's two it's two Alco switcher locomotives. Uh like basically in the center with with track vehicles attached. Yeah, here. Yeah, you wanna see? That's actually a really cool picture. Here, take a look. I'll show you. It's not a picture, it's a gift. Take a look. This this thing. How fast does it go? Uh two miles an hour unladen. With uh, with 15 million pounds of rocket, it probably goes like I don't know, two thirds of a two thirds of a kilometer an hour, like half mile an hour. Yeah, beautiful space trains. See, <laughs> see, it it goes underneath it and it picks the whole thing up and it moves it back. I don't know that Villanova. Oh, that's actually really cool. This goes make neat. Apparently work is underway to get Slick 40 ready for crew launches per Bill Gerstenmeyer. Slick 40? Slick 40? Where'd you hear that? Where'd you hear that, Core? NASA Steve Stitch says that SpaceX and NASA are continuing to look at outfitting Slick 40 for Dragon missions given Starship work at 39A. SpaceX's Gers says that the hardware is already in work to prepare Slick 40. Starship will only come to 39A after it's proven reliable in Texas. Gers, Gers further adds that this is that this is going to happen. Starting with cargo launches from Slick 40 before moving to Clue, crew, we'll be ready in time for Starship. It was in the Crew 5 Pro Flight Readiness Review Call. Well, that was a pretty good present from my day off. It's pretty sweet, man. Yeah, Chief, it's it's a big one, isn't it? How can you watch five screens at the same time without turning your head? I can't do it. Uh, I don't have five screens, net worth. I have four, if that's what you're talking about. But if I want to look at that monitor, yeah, I can't really see what's going on over here. I can see it out of my peripherals. Like I can see chat right now, but I can't I can't see what you're saying. I have to look over there. Yeah, net worth. I have four. I have one. It's like kind of a kind of a T shape like this. One, two, three, and four up there. There are five screens. No, there are four. There are four lights. Okay. Yes, Christian, I saw it. And yeah. Nerd. Nab, it was successful. Yep. I missed the crash. Where, crash. Where, where where can I look for the replay? Uh, here. Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, there, professor. We fixed the glitch. All right, ready? Take a look. Uh. Bum bottom. 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 Bum, bottom, bottom. 
Pam 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 pam. That's the last real full image we got right there. Yeah, I got you, Colin. Don't worry about it. And then we got half of an image before it. Ah. Okay, Spielberg. <laughs> I prefer Brooks. Thank you very much. Dart one. It's gone to plaid. <laughs> you just turn around. Thirty-seven screens. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a lot of screens, isn't it? I like that one though. That one's pretty good. Yeah, that one that one's pretty sweet. All right, that one ain't bad though either. The one on the far left is actually pretty good. So like you got those two right there, and then this one's good. I really, really, really like that one. That one is my favorite. The shuttle, the shuttle footage. That one's really cool. I need a loss of signal emote. Yeah, right. I have a loss of signal emote, Orion. At least we did. I extracted the high res. Enhance. 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 That man is playing Galaga. Bum. But um, but um, track my favorite is the Falcon Heavy Twin Booster landings. Yep, 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 yep. Not seeing LOS. We used to have one. Oh, it's gone. I wonder what they got. I wonder how they, how they got rid of it. I wonder who got rid of it and why. These guys attack those guys. Those guys invade these guys. Soon whole world implode. Imagine not knowing who or why. No? Triple X? Alright, cool. Never mind. Oh, shit! Okay. Okay, let's take a bet on how many music videos this finds its way into. Picking up signs of a Winnebago. Winnebago? Lone Star. Link to this tweet. Forge. Link it up. Link it up. Link it up. <laughs> Dude, look at that. That's an asteroid orbiting around another asteroid. Grab your guitar. You can be the first one. Oh. Where was the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom! Well, back to the old electronic drawing board. <clears throat> Remind me to not do that again. You got the last frame? Oof, don't do that again. Why not? <laughs> Why not? All right. You told us to say it. Okay, that's fair. Our last frame. <laughs> Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. <laughs> oh, I think so, Brian. <laughs> can't, dude. I can't do that voice. That's uh, Maurice Lamarche. Really, really good voice actor. Probably best in the business, man. 
Can this find somewhere in your Minecraft save? Oh, <laughs> maybe. Did it make a kaboob sound? Um, Hernt, probably not. There's no sound in space, so... I mean, be, well, the reason why there's no sound in space... Sorry, I didn't say that right. I'm getting over a little bit of a hangover from yesterday. Don't ask. It, it was from watching American football. Our, our, our football, not football. Different, different differences. Uh, that's another story, though. Um, so... There's no air up there, and you need air for sound to carry. So there's no air up there. The only the only sounds, if anything, what that you would have heard would have been the seismic vibrations if you were on the asteroid. Yeah, yeah, Procyon. It was not a good day for any 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 team that I like. <laughs> the Lions lost. The Patriots lost. Tampa Bay lost, and the Red Sox lost too. It's like not even the same sport. I'm like. Oh, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> the, Red Sox, the Red Sox lost to the Yankees. It's just like, oh, this is great. I'm just having a great day. Where's the beer, please? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I can't even be mad. It's just terrible. Tampa Bay losing is always a reason to celebrate. I will admit the tablet throw was pretty funny. And the uh, the the Bill Zell coordinator throwing... Throwing his headset. Dude, he nerd raged in a football game. Did you guys see that? Oh my goodness. The Bills offensive coordinator threw his headset and threw his headset at the table and threw the tablet at the wall. He was pissed. No, no, no. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, Kraz, they they choked. I'd be pissed. I'd have been pissed. <laughs> oh, but why is there air and space museum? Uh, because science? Yeah. Sticking around for a bit or just quick space coverage? Uh, NASA press briefing is on now. Well, let's brief then. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pain free. Yeah, yeah. Bill's offensive coordinator. Yeah, wow, wow, watch it. It's pretty bad. <laughs> like, straight up. Anyway. In the next half hour, here we, go. we will get a sense of what it was like in the control room as we hear from some of the team members who were there we're covering for the this final approach and we'll impact of the DART spacecraft. I want to thank NASA for challenging us with this problem and entrusting us with the mission. DART has now joined a long list of APL firsts in space. First photos of Earth from space, creation of satellite you navigation did. with the transit system, the incredible New Horizons flyby of Pluto, and the record-setting Parker Solar Probe that has touched the sun. We can now add to this list DART, our world's first planetary defense test mission. On behalf of the Applied Physics Laboratory, congratulations to the DART team and to NASA on this historic accomplishment and first demonstration of a game-changing planetary defense capability. Go DART. Go DART. Thank you, Director Semmel. Go DART. And again, yeah. welcome to the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, where NASA's DART, DART. mission felt has like, just felt like there should have been a clap there. History. I'm Josh Handel with NASA's Office of Communications. Josh has got a handle on Earlier, this. we saw incredible live coverage of DART's terminal approach with its target asteroid in near real time for humanity's first ever test for planetary defense. Let's take a look at that instant replay and that incredible footage. But, um, but, wow. So here you can see but, Didymos and Dimorphos. The spacecraft is yeah. autonomously navigating itself. <laughs> it is precision locked on the asteroid moonlet, cruising in at a speed of 4,000 miles per second. SpongeBob, don't you know that? And now you can see Dimorphos slowly filling the screen. We've never seen this object before. Bullseye. We also have incredible high-resolution imagery from DART's Draco camera, 
which we are now able to show. Somebody did that on purpose. <laughs> Here's the asteroid system. Dimorphous <laughs> filling the field of view. Incredible surface detail of an asteroid is, seven million miles from Earth that, that we have cool. never seen. They ran out of res. Seen. They spent it all on the absolutely. They spent amazing. it all on that camera that's Some, dead now. Something Oops. for the history books. <clears throat> and and this is the last frame from the spacecraft before we confirmed loss of signal. I'm joined now by some members from the DART team who have helped turn this incredible first-of-its-kind mission, which honestly sounds like something from a science fiction movie, into science fact. They include Ed Reynolds, DART project manager here at APL, Lena Adams, he DART mission really systems engineer at APL, Mark Jensenius, DART smart nav guidance engineer at APL, Carolyn Ernst, DART Draco instrument scientist at APL, and Julie Bellarose, DART navigation lead at APL. At, sorry, at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. <laughs> we're going to quickly hear some <laughs> opening remarks from Ed and Lena, That's and then we're going to take some sure. questions from our media that we have with us here in the room, both at APL and also dialed into our phone bridge. We're going to try and answer as many questions as we have in the limited amount of time, so let's get started. Ed and Lena, tell us, how are you feeling right now? Good. Great and relieved. Going to Disney World. <laughs> I'm sure. <So. laughs> oh, yeah, no, I definitely feel relieved. And uh, it, it is absolutely wonderful to do something this amazing. And we are so excited to be yeah. done. <laughs> Uh, you know, we've worked on this mission for at least seven years now, and uh, it's been a work of over a thousand people that have put their heart and soul into it. So to see it so beautifully concluded today was just uh, an incredible feeling right. and also very tiring. <laughs> Again, a huge congratulations to you and the entire DART team. Absolutely amazing history has been made today. We're now going to take a few questions from the media. For folks in the room with us here, if you have a question, please make your way Damn. to one of the microphones in the aisles and state your name and affiliation. And for anyone dialed into our phone bridge, please press star one to be entered into the queue. Boop, boop. Yes. Hi, Jeff Faust of Space News. Jeff. Uh, so how close of a bullseye was this? I heard uh, something about 17 meters uh, from the center. Uh, do you have an idea of just how close you got to hitting the, the, the target? That's right. We were about 17 meters uh, getting really close in, and we'll get a much better understanding of where we are uh, from the impact images that the investigation team now is going to analyze for quite some time. Mark? Yes. <laughs> 17 meters was the final estimate out of our onboard guidance. Um, that is to the is center of uh, the lit up pixels, so there may be a refinement on that still as the investigation team takes a look at things. Yeah, because you saw the asteroid was not completely lit from all the sides. So actually finding where that center is is going to take some time. Thank you. We're ready for the next question. Uh, yeah, hi, uh, Joel Achenbach with The Washington Post. First of all, congratulations. Uh, tremendous mission. When did you know you were going to hit it? Um, like how, at what point during the, the approach did you know this is this is going to be successful in terms of hitting it, whether it was 17 meters or not, that we're going to hit the asteroid? So, I'm going to take the first part and then um, you can add more detail. But uh, the thing, you know, as, as we approached, you know, even when we were like an hour or 50 minutes out, it, it really looked like a nominal, um, a, a nominal, ex, you know, trajectory that we practiced over and over and over again. And we practiced all types of different geometries and scenarios. And this was like I kept telling the people right next to me, this is, this is nominal. This is nominal. This is nominal. So, and it just <laughs> stayed nominal. So, you know, like 40 minutes out, you were really getting the good feeling. And you could tell everybody in the whole room was getting that same feeling that it, it was it was actually a fairly relaxed environment. It wasn't tense. And then as as we hit like the last two minutes where we 
could no longer command the spacecraft and you knew we were on the trajectory and you knew that we were not going to do anything to change it, it was just joy. <laughs> you know, just yeah. you got to enjoy the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the the one thing we definitely, I just want to say thank you to the JPL navigation yeah. team yes. because they put us on this perfect trajectory to Didymos. So the way this mission worked is that we were guiding towards Didymos for a while and then we switched over and started guiding towards the amorphous. So uh, the JPL That's team crazy. actually uh, did a lot of analysis recently. We executed late maneuvers and were able to put us in the trajectory that basically was hitting bullseye on Didymos. And that is why the whole team felt so comfortable most of the time that we actually already happened to impact slack, really and punch impact. the asteroid in the wow. face about yeah, 10,000 miles an hour yeah. <laughs> no, 14 14,000 yeah I'll, I'll say that uh, once we got a look it was awesome Morpheus, uh, I think that's when the team was confident uh, that we were going to hit that was the one unknown going in yes absolutely that asteroid, that asteroid talk crap like we were very confident in talk tracks. spit get uh, hit Yes, absolutely. NASA, that was definitely the defining probably. moment where we were like, oh, yes, A, Dimorphos exists. Yes. <laughs> so that was a big relief for everyone. And then, of course, yeah. the what second part was right, that we we're seeing cool, where we're expecting it to It'll see. Work. It was separating Dude, away from right the, the larger face. asteroid as, 17 as meter we deviation, expected. Which is and then we were really able up. to hit really execute a textbook maneuver. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Thank you. We're ready for the next question. Hello, thank you. Uh, Tarek Malik with uh, Space.com, I think, for Elena or whomever would like to do it. You mentioned, uh, or Ed described the feeling as absolute joy, and I'm just curious. I mean, there were a lot of celebrations that we saw actually here. There was screaming and chanting just all the way down. Uh, I'm just curious, of those last minutes, five minutes in, where you were all hands off, what that atmosphere was like, and then what Dimorphos, I know, we got your first thoughts about lot. seeing Can it up close that? with those boulders and crags and, and shadows uh, is like, Come on now. So I'll say a couple of words and then I'll give it over to the rest of the team, especially to Carolyn, to talk more about the surface of the <laughs> Dimorphos. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, but um, definitely as we were getting close to the asteroid, there was a lot of, Ed said joy, I say both terror and joy at the same time because we, we saw that we were going to impact. We this asteroid was coming into the field of view for the first time. We really had no idea what to expect. We didn't really know the shape of the asteroid, but we knew we were going to hit. So I think all of us were kind of holding our breaths. I'm kind of surprised none of us passed out, actually, <laughs> for a second there. But, um, but at the end, you know, I mean, me personally, I felt a little numb. Like, yes, we were celebrating. There was a lot of joy, but you also feel a little numb that all of this, you know, so much so many years of work are right. now complete. Yeah. And so that expectation of what's next is, uh, but there's a lot of next things going on for DART, so I'll let you guys talk about that. Yeah, I was going to say that these guys, their job is done, but ours is just beginning. So I've been lucky enough to be kind of embedded with the engineering team and watching them all here plan and test and work together. And Draco, of course, was built here at APL. So seeing it come from plans all the way to something that took such amazing pictures was awesome. These guys were all standing up in those last two minutes because they were hands off and looking. And I was like this far from my screen looking at the amazing <laughs> pictures come in because they were just outstanding. Um, and I saw them come in at the same time as everybody here saw them come in. So, you know, we will spend the next months and years doing analysis, of course. Um, our job has just started, but it really looks just amazing. It looks, it's like adorable. It's this little moon. It's so cute. Um, it looks in a lot of ways like <laughs> some of the other small asteroids we've seen. You know, if you remember, we've seen Bennu and Ryugu recently through NASA and Japanese Space Agency missions, and they are also covered in boulders. So we suspect it is likely to be a rubble pile, kind of loosely consolidated. Um, mm -hmm. Didymos, which you saw leaving the frame, I almost wanted to watch it more. You know, obviously we want to hit, but I was like, oh, look at that, so cool. It has face. maybe craters and boulders <laughs> and smooth patches. And so there's a lot of work that the um, proxim proximity working group will be doing over the next few days. Um, we will be finding the exact impact site to really understand, you know, what kind of crater did we make? Baby um, and of course, the, the ground-based yes. observers are busy as we speak, you know, looking at the data and taking it over the course of the next um, days and weeks to find out what we really did. Thank you. We're ready for the next question. Yes. 
Hi, Kristen Fisher with CNN. Um, Elena, I was wondering one more time if you could just explain exactly uh, how long it will take before we know if DART was successful in pushing this asteroid off its current orbit. Uh, we know the impact was successful tonight. Congratulations. But if you can just walk us through the timing of that second piece one more time. And finally, uh, I'd also like to know if you think that all Earthlings should rest a little easier <laughs> tonight. Thank you. Um, yeah, no problem. Thank you for that question. So uh, we are going to be seeing additional uh, data over the next. So, of course, the ground-based observatories are already taking. Hey guys, these cameras look bad because they spent all the money on the cameras that hit the asteroid. But we can't get those back no more. So, yeah, we're stuck with this. We had to, we had to, go, back to, we had to go back to using these cameras. In the next couple of months, we're actually going to get a confirmation of exact uh, period change that we made. So it's not going to be tomorrow, I'm sorry, but it is going, we might see some uh, Leech and Cube CubeSat images coming up in the next day or two, which was the little CubeSat that we let go of about 15 days ago. It's, it should have the cameras on the set were bad too. Shut up, man. Now and uh, took some images Shut of up. the plume that we created. So we're going to be seeing that data come down soon in the next couple of days. And then over the next two months, we're going to see more information from the investigation team on what period change did we actually make. Because that's our number two goal. Number one was hit the asteroid, which we've done. But now number two is really measure that period change and characterize how much ejecta uh, we actually I don't, I don't put think it would have broke. And I can't remember the second. <laughs> So just to clarify, you say about two months. Yeah, about two months. Roughly right. two months. My second question was for just real should for the real answer. Oh, sorry. What was that? I would say a couple of months for the full quantitative answer. A couple you know, of months. Some things will likely come out in even days, maybe weeks, to say this is what such and such a observatory saw, or this is what Leech Cube saw. I know that they plan to download images the next couple of days. So we'll get some pieces of that answer soon. But the yeah, I would say the, the quantitative well, full answer a couple months. And then, Elena, my yeah, second the question was, sleeping better question. Should, yeah. all earthlings, should all Earthlings sleep a little easier tonight? I definitely think that, as far as we can tell, our first planetary defense test was a success, and I think we can clap to that, everyone. <laughs> so, clap, <laughs> chat. Clap. Uh, yeah, well, I, clap harder. Yeah, I think the Earthlings should sleep better. Definitely, no, I will. Cool. Yeah. And <laughs> I will. Yeah. The people working here, yeah. we're definitely going to sleep better. <laughs> Thank Still you. Funny. Yes. Next question. Uh, Ken Chang, New York Times. Um, did anything go wrong tonight? I was just wondering, did you have to make any yes, adjustments sir. during the last four hours? No. We job, have Ed. not. No. Please. <laughs> it's just this, been wonderful. This, this mission was straight down the middle of what our expectations were, and uh, there were no adjustments needed. No. Hell Zero. yeah. I, it was actually kind of throat. disappointing. We prepared <laughs> these 21 contingencies, and then we did none of them. But, but we were ready to do them. You we, plan them so you don't have exactly, to use them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Marina Korn with The Atlantic. Now that you have gotten a good-ish look at the surface of this asteroid, can you tell us in more detail what exactly happened to the spacecraft beyond it was smashed to bits? Like, <laughs> in graphic detail, like, where are some of the bits and pieces, are they kind of floating off in space, are they embedded in this new Don't crater? If you could hover over the asteroid right now, what would you be seeing? Thank you. Oh my goodness, that's a good question. Uh, I'll let Carolyn take oh, it first. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I would say uh, if you could hover over it right now, you probably there could even still be ejecta coming out because the gravity of this thing is so low that it actually takes quite a while for things to fall back if they do. So you might still see a cloud of ejecta out there for a while. Yeah. Um, it, we expect a crater of about 10 they to 20 exist. meters. You heard right? that, yeah. so, so if if this is really a rubble pile, it means that it's pretty low in strength, and that low means you will see. get a lot of ejecta. Um, and that means, you know, the spacecraft is kaput, right? We lost signal at the expected times. That clearly broke. Um, you could find some pieces in the crater. You could find pieces. They'd probably be pretty shattered. You could find debris leaving also. So um, I don't know that you would recognize it. We'll have to see when Hera gets there in 2026 if there's anything left. But my guess is that was such a fast impact that you won't be able to see anything. And we were also carrying a lot of hydrazine and xenon on board. Oh. So we're actually, as engineers, we're discussing in the control room, uh, would we actually see some sort of brightening just based on the fact that we just, if you know, evaporate a whole bunch of xenon, too. Cool. 
Thank you. Yes. Hi, my name is Maya. I'm here with the NASA Social from Cal State Long Beach. I wanted to ask, can you describe like the bittersweet feeling of this DART project that you've been working on for so many years? Like, do its job and impact the asteroid, but also be destroyed at the same time? I, I don't have a bittersweet feeling. Like, <laughs> it, we, we were given a really hard goal, you know, and you focus on the goal, and I, I don't think any of us named the spacecraft. <laughs> so, it, like, we, we achieved the requirement. We achieved the goal. That's, and that, and, it, yeah. and it was, a, it was, yeah, we did a methodical process to develop the design that could do that. And it's, it's, to me, it's more just satisfaction that the process worked and we achieved the goal. And, um, you know, you always think, like, well, if we missed, we, you know, the spacecraft lives and we can do. But it's like, no, we didn't achieve the goal. And so I, I'm, I... I will relish this moment, and I am, I am happy with the outcome. Yeah, and I'd like to add that I think the part that we will miss the most as the people who have worked on this for a long period of time is the team. The team we had was right. amazing, and we really enjoyed working as a team together. We had fun. We built a spacecraft during COVID. You know, we bonded over that, and I feel like that made us stronger going forward. So the bittersweet part will really come in with the fact that the whole team is going to be disbanding now, moving on to different projects, and we all hope that we get to work together again at some point. But uh, the point is that the DART team as the engineering team and as management team, I think we're kind of done and we're moving on to other things. I think the other part of that is, it, like Ed sort of said, this is the goal. This is what it was supposed to do. So we didn't have years and years of it in orbit about something and then it crashed and you remember those good times. Oh, those are great times. You know, the, the good times were right then. We just saw them. And, uh, and it was its job. It was supposed to do that to get those good times. So. Yeah. yeah, this was the moment yeah. for the spacecraft. I have to say, I shed a tear <laughs> when I, you know, the last image that um, didn't come out fully. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of emotion in, in those critical time, and we had some surprises in the last few weeks and a lot of teamwork going on, and so, um, you know, there's um, a lot of um, friendship uh, mm -hmm. that's being built. So uh, it was a relief to see that it went so well, and from a navigation perspective, it really went very well, and we were, you know, heading straight to uh, Didymos, and, you know, we were very happy and relieved that SmartNav didn't have to do that much until it saw Dimorphos. Um, so there's relief, but then, yeah, at the end, it's just, I shed a tear, and it's just the emotion that comes up. Thank you. We're ready for the next question. Hi, I'm Brittany Brackington of Great Me Baby on TikTok. My question is, how are you going to go about calculating the new orbit or trajectory of Dimorphos? Good question. I guess I'll take that one. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all the, the ground-based observing. Um, they've been observing the system for years before now to get a good baseline as to what was the pre-impact situation. And they'll be observing over the next days and weeks and comparing that to what was there before. Um, with, and with light curves. With light curves, yes. So yeah. um, we cannot see the two bodies from the Earth. They just appear almost like a star. It's a point source. But we can tell, uh, much like when you discover an exoplanet, and you can tell that it's there just by the light dimming as it goes in front of the star. Um, it's similar for the Didymos system. So you get eclipses between the main and the moon. And so you're measuring the timing of those eclipses, and that's what tells you how shortened the orbit got. Cool. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sam Armand from AFP. Um, just to piggyback on a colleague's qu question for Carolyn, um, you, you mentioned it looked cute to you. Um, were there any sort of other adjectives that came to mind? What, what would you describe its shape as? For me, it looked like either a, a bread bun or an oh, egg. Uh, what, what sort of thoughts came to your mind? Yeah, every aster is a potato, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I mean, and it's amazing, right? Um, <laughs> It is awfully egg-shaped, though. It, um, compared to other things that we've seen, that moon looked very, uh, not ellipsoidal quite, but, um, you know, like oh, egg-shaped with a bunch of boulders gone. clearly on the top, yeah. like it's a pile of rubble. Um, I was actually a little surprised by the shape of Didymos, too. Um, we had a radar model, which was um, good, and it got the bulk shape. 
but it actually was more elongated than I thought. And of course, you cannot see details um, with that radar model that we have. And so you could start to see, oh, I think that, oh, that's a boulder. Oh, I can see it. Oh, it's a crater. Oh, my gosh. Is that a smooth patch? That's amazing. So we're going to be able to tell a lot about how the system formed um, and what it has experienced over time um, as we look at these images closer. Thank you. Thank you. I believe we now have a question from one of our reporters dialed in. Hi, yes, these are the questions from the phone bridge. I, I do have two. Uh, the first is from Stephen Clark at Space Flight Now. Uh, he's looking to know if we have confirmation from Lysia Cube uh, in terms of taking any photos, taking any pictures, and uh, what would be the earliest opportunity uh, for a downlink and seeing those. That's the first question. I'll have it one is more fine. after that. They're going to roll at 11 hours. So we did like 40 minutes before impact. Tonight. We we did get a short email from our our Italian colleagues, <laughs> yeah. and they were they were shooting to get a, a an extended pass about three hours from now. And that would be that would be the very first opportunity. And so it's it's just a matter of can the DSN schedule the pass, and can they just coordinate in addition to other telemetry getting the image down, but. It is a priority for them. Okay. Great, thank you. One other question from the phone nice. bridge for now. Uh, Jim Siegel with NASA Tech. Uh, the question is that uh, he understands that JPL keeps a sentry risk table of objects, and are there other asteroids or other objects that have already been identified to go after next? So I can jump in here. Yeah, for any questions related to any future planetary defense efforts, please reach out to NASA's Office of Communications for response. Thank you. Next question. Hi, I'm Greg Lenischeck, and I attended the NASA social, and I was a student at Embry-Riddle. My question is, uh, an asteroid hit Mars last Friday, I think, and I, I just didn't know if, if that was a, uh, when we say that's a planet, planetary defense, is it just Earth? At this point, I mean, I know it's really In premature case, to ask it that. Is. <laughs> but I, that's that's. I just when I when I read that last week, I was like, oh, just yeah. there's there's stuff everywhere. Every planet gets hit. The moon gets hit. Everything out. Asteroids get hit, not just by dart. Um, you know, all the time. And I like her. She's we cool. We <laughs> often use those craters to tell us more about how what happened in, in history. A lot of that history on Earth is gone. And so we can look at those other planets, you know, the moon and other planets around us to know, like, what happened in the beginning to get us to where we are now. But, oh, my gosh, there's a lot of craters there. <laughs> so a lot of stuff happened, but now not so much. A lot of time has gone by. Um, but in terms of defense, we're the only place with, with life right now, right? So we're, that's what we're really primarily worried about. Yeah, but Planetary Defense Office does actually look at all of these um, impacts and really assesses what happens. And that's part of the yeah, Planetary Defense like, Office no. strategy <laughs> is to characterize, you, you know, other objects in the solar system to, up, yeah. uh, and characterize the threat, understand what they're made out of. Because, you know, as we mentioned today, if we bring it back to Dimorphos yeah, and yeah. Didymos, yeah. you know, cool. what are they made out of? Did you see that giant rubble pile? You know, what is it actually going to create? Um, and will that impact actually move the asteroid as much as you would expect? And understanding these craters on the Moon and Mars really kind of helps you with that. Yeah, like the whole on one, solar Dave. system is the laboratory experiment, and you have to look at all of the data to understand what's happening here. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We have time for one more yeah, question. John, guys. Yes. Yeah, hi, awesome, David man. Ariosto, Kanoff Doubleday Publishing. Uh, you had some somewhat new technology on aboard this, this spacecraft as kilograms, well. Right? You have the solar powered. Uh, uh, ion propulsion. And I wanted to know if you could address how that went and also how this relates to, to future missions. Oh, yeah, I, I love to talk about new technology on DART. Number one, our solar panels work beautifully. Um, that was a hair-raising moment for us early on in launch when we had to deploy them autonomously, and that worked wonderfully. They provided us as much power as we expected, and the whole mechanism, deployment mechanism, worked extremely well. And it will be extremely important for future missions to outer planets because of the mass savings you get with these rolled-up panels. So uh, we thought the solar panels worked wonderfully. The next sea engine, we did demonstrate it in flight for about two hours. We did fire it. It worked as expected. Uh, however, there was a little bit of interaction with the spacecraft as well uh, that was not anticipated. And uh, we have uh, since then not fired the ion thruster. 
um, as part of our miscontingency, was actually uh, firing it up again. <laughs> but thank goodness we didn't have to do it. Could you elaborate a little bit on how that interacted with the spacecraft? Ed, do you want to talk about yeah. that? Yeah. So um, early on in the, the next C development, as we're developing our interface document, we knew when you start it up, it has a reset mode where there's a little bit of arcing. And the reset mode was understood to introduce up to 25 amps of current that could go through the spacecraft structure. Uh, what was discovered after, um, after we launched and after we did this two-hour demonstration when we were looking at our telemetry, we saw some anomalies in our power system and we investigated. And it, it led to an investigation using the engineering model of the next C thruster. And lo and behold, we found that there was not one, but two different reset phenomenon that could occur. One was, the second one was rare, and now it's understood, but it, it instead of introducing up to 25 amps, it introduced over 100 amps. And that was something that we were not we were not tested to demonstrate that we could withstand that and just from a risk perspective Yikes. in trying to achieve the, the primary mission, which is tonight hitting the asteroid, weldy. we did not want to put that at risk. Yep. And so we talked with NASA and came up with a, a recommendation and, and a concurrence to just not fire it anymore. But as Lena had said, if we had missed, um, we, the, we, if we had a missed approach, um, and the spacecraft was healthy, the, one of the options was we could have fired up, you know, our whole risk posture has changed. If, if you missed it on approach, your risk posture changes. We could have fired it up, taken the risk of, of, of and the, you know, coming over those couple, you know, that 100 amps phenomenon again, and we would have fired it for about eight days and that would have put us on a, on a trajectory that we would be coming back to the exact same asteroid uh, two years later. Cool. Yeah. And I'll just add that uh, even cool, in the future man. for next sea missions, um, we don't see a problem with that. This could be accommodated. It was just something that was not not anticipated at the time uh, when we put the thruster right. onto the spacecraft. But propulsion. Yeah, but I'm, ion propulsion is extremely cool. great for, especially if you want to go visit all these other asteroids, right? You can actually maneuver around them. And uh, yeah, so Discovery. we're no, really looking up. forward yeah, to it. The thruster, the, the ion, the next sea thruster is a fine thruster. It has great performance. It's just making yeah, sure right that the interface between the thruster and the spacecraft are, are properly um, properly designed. Thank you so much. That is all the time that we have cool tonight. More. Thank you so much to our panelists. Thank you to our media, both with us here in the room and on the phone bridge. And thank you for watching our coverage of DART the world's first ever test for planetary defense. To stay updated on this incredible first of its kind mission, including to see any images Without returned me. by the Italian Space Agency's Lichia Cube satellite, and to learn when we confirm if DART's kinetic impact with its target asteroid has changed that asteroid's motion in space, visit nasa.gov forward slash DART. We're going to leave you now with that instant replay, replay of DART's incredible Last Repay. images before it's He's terminal about approach. That, sneaky. Thank you and good night. This is for the dinosaurs. Okay. Budget cups. That's why. That's why I came out and covered this today, guys. There's lit that. There's footage. There was footage, man. Hit the brakes! Hit the brakes! Oh. <laughs> NASA. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. NASA, in the words of NASA, talk spit, get hit. NASA, DART mission, 2022. NASA copy, copied my logo? Ugh. Bro, that asteroid turned into a meatball. Yeah. All right, dudes.
That was awesome. I'm really happy that I got to come in here and see it. <laughs> I'd like to think that I'd like to think that the last thing that went through Dot's computer, other than that asteroid, was how he got revenge for the dinosaur. Doge, I had to drive him home today, Renak. He was sad, but he's happy because he's with the owners again. Are we not afraid that we have upset the asteroid race with all the they crashed it? Ah, uh, they, hey, they attacked us first. They took Buenos Aires. All right, they attacked Buenos Aires. I've seen this movie before. Would you like to know more? Would you, would you, not you, not you, would you like to know more? Are you doing your part? Guys, are you doing your part? <laughs> Who's defend, who defends Mars? The Martians do. Oh crap, now I'm on a list. Discovery, go at throttle up. Wouldn't you like to know what the boy is? Oh my god. <laughs> Service guarantees citizenship. <laughs> well, that was that was awesome. And Adrian, grazie. Thank you very much for the raid. I do appreciate it. I need to learn more Italian. That is a, that is the thing that we need to do here. If we're going to get raided like that, that's a 2500 viewer raid. If we're going to get raided like that. Your boy your boy's got to go brush up on the Italian, you know what I mean? Am I legally allowed to fire up my own rocket? Sure, Hunter. Yeah. But here's the thing. Yeah, of course you're legally allowed to. But there are certifications that you have to get. You get 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 like a license for it, just like driving a car. Right? You got to get certain licenses. And if you get like a... They're, they're, there's like three of them. There's L1, L2, and L3. And if you get these licenses, you can launch rockets. Sure. No problem. Yeah, they'll let you launch whatever in a controlled environment, right? But uh, yeah, that's really difficult. It's really difficult to, to do that. But you can do it. Sure, why not? Like, you could build one in your garage right now if you really wanted to. Like, I would suggest not doing that if you don't know what you're doing because you'll lose fingers that way. But you don't need it. <laughs> Dude, Hunter, I guarantee you, the astronauts don't even know about the rocket engines. That's the, en that's the engineering the engineering, man, that's the kind of stuff we talk about here. You want to learn how they work? I can teach you how they work, but I wouldn't, uh, dude, even me, I know how propulsion works. I, I can tell you how the space shuttle engines work or, or SpaceX's Raptor engines. I can tell you how any of those work, but I don't make them. I don't make them myself because that's, that's a good way to lose hands. No, Mock, that's interesting though. I forget. I forget the name of them, Jim. <laughs> Dark be like, Dimorphos, we've been trying to teach you, we're trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to head out, dude. My head hurts. That's more or less how Elon did it. I have all the books that Elon read, Silly Viking. I have them in my garage. All the propulsion books. Yeah. That's what I read, dudes. That's how I learn. That's how I learn to teach you guys. Yeah. It's really, dude, it's really interesting stuff. Rockets are really, really cool. The What comes out of them is not cool. It's pretty hot. But, yeah. I was reading RPE today. Very interesting. Yep, yep. Thanks for the coverage. No problem, dudes. No problem. Cities tomorrow? Um, Yeah. Yeah, of course, Chief. First music video to use dark footage. If this is Rickroll, I'm punching you right in the face. I know where you live. Shirts, yeah, it was a hit and run. <laughs> oh.
I'm going, dude, I'm out. <laughs> oh, guys, enjoy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow at noon, okay? <laughs> Have a good night. I'll see you. And thank you. And Adrian, thank you very much as well. Night.